Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a floating layout using HTML and CSS. This is meant to be an introductory tutorial, although um, the idea of just starting out your first time and implementing all these tags and styles might be a bit much, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it as quick as I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start off with Notepad. Nothing special about this. Um, if you're running Windows, you have it. If you're running another operating system, you have something else. Nothing special about this document. I'm going to start off with the first big three tags. First tag is HTML. HTML, I open the tag here and I close it here. Right? Most tags need to be opened and closed. The next thing I'm going to do is a head. The head is within the HTML. I think of these as container tags because they are going to have other things inside of them, much as HTML has head inside of it. Then I'm going to put a body tag. Body tag always makes me uh, giggle a little bit because sounds weird. All right, so I've got an HTML tag set. I've got head and I've got body. Notice I'm leaving some room in my head and body because there's going to be a bunch of things that go in there. A uh, very general description of head tag would be a bunch of things that don't show up on your web page. Right, the stuff that actually shows up is down in the body with the exception of the title. So I'm going to use a title tag. And I've been going at the convention of having an opening tag on one line and a closing tag on another. You can do an opening and a closing tag on the same line like this. All right, so I want I want demo page to show up in the title bar. Notice I closed the tag on the same line. You can do that. Now I need to save my file. All right, it's a little bit of a trick here, I guess. So I'm going to go File, Save As. Notice that it wants to save it as a text document. I need to pull that down to all files, right? And I need to tell this program that demo is an HTML file. So I had to type the file extension on there. All right, I have to tell it that it's an HTML file because it's not really a text file. It's text and that it doesn't have any pictures in it, but uh, it's now an HTML file. I'm going to put that on my desktop. And you can see it sitting here on my desktop. The only other thing I've got on my desktop is a picture, which I'm going to use later. Now let's preview this thing. Let's make sure it works. So if you're looking at your desktop and you can, or there's no reason to do this on your desktop. You can do it in any directory. Good to know where your directory is because you're going to be opening the file. So if I double click on this, here's my web page. Really outstanding stuff, right? It's completely blank except for the title bar which says demo page and that is what I put on under the title tag so all that stuff in the head doesn't show up on the page for the most part uh, except for that but that is really not the page that's the title bar the other thing that's gonna go in the head is our style sheet which I'm not gonna get to quite yet I'll get there soon now our actual contents gonna go down in the body so just to show you how this works I will write something like content here, and I'm going to do some copying and pasting. So control V is how I'm just mashing out all this stuff. I do have word wrap on. If you don't have word wrap on, it's this option right here. If I turn it off, I just get these long strings, which you may or may not want. Notice there's no tag around that. I just wrote content. I'm going to save with control S. I'm going to head back over to my page. I'm going to refresh it with F5. Of course, there's all the kinds of ways to refresh and save. Notice there's my content. I didn't need to do anything special with that. Let's say that uh, I've got a sentence that ends right here. You would think, oh, put a period, press return, right? That's going to do something, right? So Control S, F5. Notice that it didn't really do anything other than put a period in there. If you want an actual line break, you have to use the break tag. So BR, that means it's the equivalent of pressing enter. So I save, I refresh, and there's my line break. It is completely necessary when I make changes here to save this file and to refresh this. If you don't refresh, the page isn't going to change. If you don't save, uh, then the page isn't going to get updated. All right, so that's what we've got so far. Now I'm going to show you a couple other tags. We'll start off with an H1. All right, this is a heading. And I'm just going to do some generic text like page title. And I'm going to close that H1 tag. And then below that, I'm going to do an H, uh, how about an H, fine, I already did H2. And I'll say subtitle. And I'm going to close that tag. 
Notice every tag I've done so far has been closed, except the break, which kind of makes sense because all I want is a page break. There's not any additional details. Oftentimes when you're doing these tags that close themselves, you can put a forward slash at the end of it. That's kind of a way of just kind of indicating, hey, this tag opens and closes right here. Notice it's on this side as opposed to this. There are six different levels of headings. I'm going to control S save. Uh, F5 refresh and there I go right so here's my h1 you could redefine that tag later here's my h2 I'm also going to show another tag do a horizontal rule so hr tag it's another one of those tags that doesn't need to be closed so I save I refresh and I get a line across all right we're getting a page we're going somewhere what I'm going to do now is show you a couple more tags and then we're going to start getting to CSS like I said, going fast, that's okay. Next tag I want to show you is an image tag, so IMG. And when you're putting an image in your document, you need to have a source. So this says, hey, go get the file from somewhere. And here's where it comes in handy. For this example, at least, I'm, I'm storing my HTML file on my desktop, and I've got an image called Ireland.jpg on my desktop. So the source of my image is Ireland.jpg. Now, when you start getting more advanced, you're going to probably have your images in a subfolder, and then you'd have to navigate to that. I could also put a web address of a picture here, but I'm just going to work locally. All right, so I save that, uh, refresh this, and there's my picture. Right? I don't think that's where I want it. We'll deal with that soon enough. Um, so we've got an image tag here, and this is what you call an attribute, right? The image or the name of the tag is whatever goes right next to the uh, next to the pointy bracket. Uh, this is an attribute. An attribute you might set of a picture might be something like width. Say width equals 250, right? Save, refresh, and that worked. Notice how I just changed the width and the size automatically scaled. That's a pretty good way to do things. The next thing I want to put in here is a list. Right, so a bulleted list, basically. So the tag for that is UL, because that's an unordered list. So I need an opening and a closing tag. And a list is made up of list items. And I don't know what's going to be in my list. Let's just say one. And my next list item is going to be two. And my last list item is going to be three. Right, notice opening and closing tag. This is going to be what's actually going to be displayed. Let's see what this looks like. So I control S save, F5 reload. And my page is a real, it's a junk show, right? I've got this picture, I've got this random list, and I got my content. We're going for a floating layout. So the idea is going to be I want my picture over here, my list here, and my content in the middle. So we'll deal with that in a second here. I'm going to do a little more. I'm going to show you the anchor tag. So the idea is this is probably going to function like our navigation bar. So I want these to link to something. And I don't have anything to link it to right now. But for, th for this moment, I'm going to say A. All right, so A is for anchor tag, and that's not particularly intuitive. Everything else so far, you could see why UL stands for unordered list and LI for list item. A is for anchor, and we typically use these to create links. So a link needs an attribute. And that attribute is href. That means where do you want to link this thing to? If I want to link it to nowhere, I'm just going to put a pound symbol in there. All right, I could link it to a web page. I could link it to whatever I wanted to link it to. All right, so if you think about what this does, and I'll show it to you. If I save and refresh, now my whole document's a big link. All right, so that A tag needs to be closed, and it needs to be closed right here. Uh, the A tag's one of those ones that people do forget sometimes. And so basically, the one is what I want to be the link. So whatever's between the A tags is what's going to show up as my link. Yes, these are dead links. They don't go anywhere. That's OK. So I'm just creating kind of dead links on all my list items and trying to not make typos as I go. And it's tough to type around this microphone sitting right in front of my face. All right, and I will save and I will refresh. Now you see I've got a link going somewhere and it's not that intuitive. They kind of look like they all go to the same spot because they do, um, but for now that's gonna work. Now we've got the content in our page and now it's time to start styling our content. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a style sheet, and that style sheet's going to go up in the head. It could go before the title or after the title, not in the title. So I want to define a style. So it's a style tag, and type is the attribute equals text slash CSS. And my style tag is going to close somewhere. Better to give myself too ro much room than not enough. And so here's where I start defining styles. So if you remember, I want this to go to that, to the right side. I want my list on the left side, and I want this in the middle. So I'm going to create two classes. One's going to be float right. Notice I just write float right, and I could call it whatever I want to call it. Uh, I want my content to float to the right. And we're going with the floating layout, so I think that makes sense. A dot in front of it indicates that we're defining a class. And then curly braces, all right? So it opens up with curly braces, and everything between the curly braces is what goes in this float right style. So I only want to set one attribute, and that's the float attribute. And I want to set it to right. Pretty self-explanatory. Notice there's a colon after the property and a semicolon after the attribute. So I've created this thing called float right. Um, it's not going to do anything because I haven't applied it to anything. I want to apply it to this picture. So here's my picture. And so I want to write class equals float right. All right, now if I file save and refresh, now my picture is floating to the right, which is good, right? We're looking a lot better than we were just a few seconds ago. Let's take this width that I defined inline. So you call this defining attributes inline. Let's define that up in my style. So width, and, and so I replace that equal sign with a colon. When I say 250, save, and refresh. And that, I did nothing. Uh, let's go with a liquid layout here. So that's an absolute thing. So that's 250 pixels. Let's say I want this to be 30% of the page. All right, I'm going to save this. I'm going to refresh. Now my image is 30% of the page. And what's cool about that is it will resize as the browser resizes. Because these days, everyone's got a different resolution on their monitor. And with mobile devices, this is a better option probably for sizing things. So I did float right for the picture. You could probably guess what I'm doing next. I'm going to do a float left for my list. So I'm going to create a style or a class called float left. And I'm going to set the float attribute to left. And I could do something like uh, mess around with the width, but I'm not going to. And I also need to apply this to my list. I'm going to apply it at the list level. So class equals float left, save, reload, and there we go. That's kind of what I'm going for. One of the things you might notice is this is pretty gross. I've got my this just ramming right up against this, and this is slamming into this. So what I probably want to do is mess around with the margin of the padding. So let's say I want to address this problem first. That is my float left style. So let's put some margin in there. All right, I can do this with margin, or I can do it with padding. And the margin that I want to, so I've got four margins. I've got top, bottom, left, right. I want to put some margin right in there. And I'm going to use a different kind of thing. I used pixels before. I used percent. I'm going to use something called EMs. So EM is essentially the width of an M. So whatever font the user has on their screen, right? So it's going to adjust to resolution. So I'm going to say, let's go to EM. All right, so I'm saying margin. So give me some space outside of two EMs. And let's see how that affects things. That's better. So maybe with this picture here, in other words, my float right style, I might want a margin left of, let's go, fine, let's be consistent here, 2EM. Save, refresh, and you saw my content got skewed around. And now we've got a floating layout. Is this pretty? No. The idea is I'm going to create another video. And in that video, we're going to make this, I'm going to take this page, not going to change anything except the style, and we're going to make it look pretty. All right, so this is the basics. If you want to make this more functional, you know, create a web page for yourself, tune in to my next video. Thanks for watching.